Now, if it wasn't clear already, the past month has certainly shown the extent of the challenges we face as a country. The energy issue persists, corruption, crimes such as cable theft and sabotage have cost businesses, state-owned entities, municipalities, billions of rands. You've heard the interviews we've conducted on this show. We've spoken to ministers, we've spoken to CEOs, we've spoken to people leading some of the affected institutions. The Reserve Bank has sounded warnings about where we might go. And so yesterday, several business leaders met with the president and some cabinet ministers to try and figure out if we can get all hands on deck. To explain what the way forward looks like, we're joined now by Adrian Gore, who's the Discovery Limited Group Chief Executive, but also Business Unity South Africa's Vice President. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for your time. Well, Ronnie, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. We've, times. we've touched on this before, and I, I suppose it's, it's almost a standard question when somebody uh, speaks to you, because uh, you have for a long time been one of the most positive South Africans and certainly business leaders. Given the myriad of challenges, as I've just outlined, that we face as a country, do you remain optimistic about our future, or are you concerned? I remain I remain of a view the country has considerable potential and we have to work very, very quickly to make sure we deal with the challenges. And and I, I, I just don't think this is time for, for taking a position on, on how you feel. This is a time for action um, and actually getting our hands dirty. And so this initiative we've been busy with the president uh, uh, and, the, and the presidency and bringing business together is fundamentally about that, getting a focused approach to dealing with the enablers that are hobbling uh, the country. So we need to move quickly. I've heard a number of CEOs uh, speak out about their concerns, uh, and that's what they're saying publicly. What is business saying to the president behind the scenes? Well, I think before, I think importantly, we're not just saying, we've actually created a considerable initiative to tackle three enablers that we think will turn the flywheel and change the direction of the country. So we've been, we've been clear with uh, government and, and to be fair, in a, in a partnership way, uh, it's unequivocal that three areas will make a difference, energy, uh, transport and logistics, and crime and corruption. If you can turn those quickly uh, and get action and traction, that will change the direction uh, of the country. So besides just you know, narrative and speaking, we've created a partnership with structure and focus uh, uh, to work on these issues, and we've done that over the last number of months. The meeting just two days ago with, with the presidents and key ministers was about how we get progress on this issue. And I think in an unprecedented way, we brought to the front line uh, business leaders. So we've got a, a reference group of, of, of a bunch of CEOs that are, are working in these three work streams. We're bringing all CEOs together, um, and we've got clear direction what we need to deliver. So, you know, I think the narrative is one thing, but what we need to do now is deliver quickly. Is it your sense, of course, uh, that uh, the voice of business is not only being heard, but there's a real willingness now to engage with the solutions that you are putting on the table, ideology aside? Yes, I think so. I think that, that once you get into the detail, uh, you know, there, there's, no, there's no real disagreement. We've got to get gigawatts onto the, the grid. We've got to get the road and rail and port system to work, else the economy doesn't turn. And we've got to reduce crime and corruption. You know, we've got to fix these things. So I think once you get into detail, uh, you know, you can start working. You know, the pre we reviews is the delivery of the vaccine. I think the vaccine was a very successful partnership between business and government. And we got that done because we focused on, a, you know, start vaccinating people on this date. Once you start with that detail, you know, the ideology disappears. So we are clear here what needs to be done. Uh, I'm not saying we can do it. We are working hard to do that. But, you know, the, 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 the good faith of business leaders around the commitment to the country is remarkable. You know, people have come forward at scale to do this. We've got the most senior people in these work streams working. Uh, we've got you know, people assisting in car stations. We're working hard. So, so I think that uh, this is not a time for, for debate about ideology. I think we need yeah. to get traction quickly. Business and government walk, w working together and even in discussion isn't something necessarily new from NEDLAC to the CEO initiative from 2016. But it often feels as if we lose momentum and then we wait for a crisis. You mentioned the pandemic and what emerged out of that. In that moment, again, there was this cooperation and collaboration. But 
it, it often feels like once the, the the moment of crisis seems to have gone, then there's a hands-off approach and we lose the momentum. How do we make sure we don't this time? Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a very good point. I, you know, I think that when you have a pressure point in a crisis, as a country we tend to deliver, and I think that's a remarkable thing to build on. I think the national state and things revert is, yeah, we go our own ways, and that's, that's maybe, you know, it's the, the, the way of the world. I think the, the, the key issue here, and again, the vaccine is, a, is, is, a, is an easier example. There's a clear, you know, there's a clear battle against, a, against a, a pandemic. We need the same pressure points here. We need to make sure we define what needs to be delivered and fight hard to get there. I think the, the art of this is uh, uh, defining the pressure points in each of these three areas, delivering quickly, making sure we report back on all the issues. And we'll fail on some of them and, and slip back, but just keep pushing harder. I think if we can keep that pressure point, then, then that danger separates and disappears. Um, in this regard, I think, our, our, I think the breakthrough here is focusing on these three things. We know that turning the wheel on energy uh, on, on these three issues leads to economic growth. Economic growth leads to job creation. That's the broad stability and hope. That's the key issue. That's the broad picture. But let's talk about some of the details. Let's start with energy. We've heard even from the Presidential Climate Commission around what we need to do when it comes to renewables, say by 2030. I mean, this very week we've got less load shedding than we have in quite some time because private sector initiatives are bringing in renewables into the system. And yet we know the message that comes from the politicians seems to be still about coal is here to stay. When it comes down to the details, what, what, are, what are the conversations you are having in terms of helping resolve our energy crisis? I think the issue here is we need to deal with the grid right now of what we've got. So we've got to make sure power stations work and we stop the load shedding by 2024. I think that, that plan has got to be delivered. So this at the moment I think is an execution issue. The private sector is remarkably agile. You can see that happening in, 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 the, in the pace of, of renewable energy, and that will continue. And I think we'll see an acceleration in that considerably. And at the time, we'll, we will solve the problem. I think our problem is much more short-term. Stop load shedding, make sure the economy can work. So we are focused, certainly in this initiative, on helping making sure power stations work, helping assisting and partnering Eskom uh, uh, to, get, to, to get reliability in the, in the energy supply. I think the broader policy issues are big issues, but I believe right now the focus is make sure we are low shedding down and stop the suffering and keep the economy running. I spoke to an executive from Transnet Freight, Ra- Freight Rail. We know the logistics crisis we face, uh, not only, I suppose, for, trans- for Transnet, but for this economy. And one of the simple things he pointed out was how a crucial part of that corridor from Durban to Gauteng isn't protected. It's near informal settlements that have mushroomed in the recent while. And all we really need to do is make sure we've got personnel and eyes on that line, something that seems simple enough. Enough, even that isn't being done. Well, that is one of the areas, and, and as you point out, that is a key issue to getting the economy uh, working and growing. So we've got a work stream on that. Uh, you know, part of that work stream is looking at a space logistics road that fixing key rail corridors. So there's expertise in business that can help considerably in that regard. And again, I think that business strength is the depth of resources and skills. We've got companies that are operating in that space, obviously. So these are areas that we're focusing on very, very acutely. We saw the RAND tank to levels we hadn't seen before on the back, some critics would say, of our foreign policy missteps. Certainly, South Africa has a lot of explaining to do, and we've been trying to do so, no less than the Reserve Bank governor warning about the impact and what we've seen in terms of investors and ditching our bonds. Have, have you as business spoken about that issue to government? Uh, yes, we have. I mean, it's, it's a clear issue. Government business does not set foreign policy, but our trading partners are concerned, and rightly so, that we are, are not being consistent as government uh, in terms of implementing this non-aligned status as government has taken. Um, hopefully that is resolved over time, but as you say, the Reserve Bank government and business is concerned. The effect of that on the economy and our confidence in our trading partners is very, very problematic. I'm hoping that recedes quickly. And far as the economy is concerned, in terms of growth, um, we've avoided a technical recession by a hair's breadth, quite frankly. What do you think we need to do to get the economy ticking as quickly as we can? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a critical point to make, uh, Bongani. The economy 
no matter what we go through, I mean, you see that the load shedding, the stuff that we've been through over the last number of years, the, the fact the economy has not shrunk is quite remarkable. There is, a, there is a, a unique resilience about the South African economy. Not that it can't be broken, and that's our concern. But I think also we should, we should understand how agile uh, the, the economy is and how resilient it is, and we need to build on that. But again, I believe that if we, if we focus on these three enablers, I think if we build confidence and a sense of hope in people and it's more investable, uh, we change the perception with our trading partners. I think we'll, we can hopefully avert, um, you know, recession and grow the economy. That's the fundamental issue. I think the issue of, of delivery and narrative are intertwined. I think, you know, if we don't deliver, people lose hope and despair, and that is a big issue at the moment. On the other hand, with some positive narrative, we can, we can turn, you know, narrative is causal as well. It changes how people think about things and they tend to invest. So these things are a complex kind of amalgam of things. Um, again, we're of the view that we should focus down. Get these three things done. Uh, you know, get business leaders to focus on, on commitment potential, and we'll, we'll turn things. I mean, that's, that's the intention. In an odd way, I mean, of course, we always welcome engagements with business, with government and business. But in an odd way, it also feels to me that government, this government is warned about some of its missteps and they don't listen to those warnings and then a crisis occurs. We're now, of course, uh, looking at the National Health Insurance Bill that's been approved by Parliament's Portfolio Committee for Health. Uh, you have made your views clear in terms of how the NHS should be approached. Do you think once again we'll be back here where your warnings will not have been heard and then again we'll be in a crisis and back to square one repeating the cycle? You know, in the case of the NHI, it's, it's a long-term rollout. This is going to take a decade or longer for it to actually implement. So there's going to be a lot of learnings as we go forward. Uh, we've been unequivocal in our view. Of course, reform is required. The current status quo of the healthcare system is, is not accepted. We need universal healthcare. We need a workable NHI. The bill in its current form is, has problems in it. I think the primary problem is that you need the private sector, you need private funding. The fact is, we have too few resources, too few doctors, too little money. You know, that's the primary issue. Um, and there are, are significant problems in the bill as it is. We do believe it can be made workable, and as a, a, as business and certainly as our, our, our organisation that's involved in the space, we're committed to helping. Um, but there's going to be some strong debate uh, over, over, uh, as it rolls out. Um, and again, I remain of the view that over time we'll have to figure out how to make it work. There will be strong debate and there will be challenges, and I think that's part of the process. Adrian Gore, appreciate your time. Discovery Limited Group Chief Executive and also the Vice President of Business Unity South Africa. Current events. Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.